Hey guys, Airgun Angie with Backyard Shooting and I've got a new one. Um, this is actually like cutting edge, brand new. I think it came out in May and it's something like nothing else that's out there. So really, I'm serious. It is brand new, cutting edge, awesome stuff, depending on who you are. I've heard a lot of you say, what's the point? But we're going to get into that. So let's get started. Okay, first up with the Umarex Complete NCR nitrogen powered air rifle, we're gonna go over the aesthetics. From butt to muzzle, total length is 41 and a half inches long and the total weight is seven pounds. We have a rubber butt pad connected to the glass filled polymer stock. Moving forward toward the action, you'll find a contoured grip which leads to the trigger guard and the single stage yet adjustable for travel trigger and the manual safety that is a push button safety on the trigger. In front of that on the belly of the gun you'll see two allen screws. The first one closest to the trigger guard is the stock screw and the one further away from the trigger guard is the degassing screw for your nitro air cartridge. In front of that you'll find the nitro air cartridge cover. Now above that you'll find the 21 and a half inch barrel and it has a silence air fixed moderator. If you follow the barrel back to the action, you'll see that there is a split pick rail on top to allow for the multi-shot mag. This is a 10-shot magazine, and it is super easy to load. On the right side of the gun, you'll find the side cocking lever. Before shooting this one, it does not have open sights, so you will need to mount a scope, some kind of optic. You can mount your own open sights if you like, red dot, or I have the Hawk Vantage 4 to 16 by 50 mounted on mine. That's it for aesthetics, on to operation. First things first, always make sure it is on safe. Make sure the button is protruding out the right side of the trigger and not the left. Once you've done that, remove the nitro air cartridge cover by pressing on the two buttons and pulling toward the end of the barrel. Take your 3600 PSI nitro air cartridge and insert it into the threads. But first, before you do that, rewind. Make sure your degassing screw is tight. Even if you just bought the gun, make sure your degassing screw is tight. If it is not, I know I did this. If it is not, you will waste your nitro air and that will surely suck. So be sure tighten your degassing screw before you put the nitro air cartridge in. There is quite a long thread section on the nitro air cartridge, so you will need to twist it several times before you get to the point where it will puncture. Once it's punctured, I'm just basically twist it until you can get it as tight as you can and that's it guys. Slide the cartridge cover back on. Then you're going to load your 10 shot rotary mag, which is super simple. You don't have to twist it. Just look at it just as it is. Hold it right there. Put, maybe put your finger behind the hole. You don't always have to do that either. Pop the pellet in head first, turn it, pop it in again, keep rotating and popping in pellets until it's full and that's basically it for loading the mag. Then you're going to pull back the side lever cocking handle, insert the mag in the left side of the gun, push your cocking handle forward, disengage the safety, and pull the trigger. All right, guys, so I'm at 50 yards with the Umarex Nitrogen, Umarex Nitrogen, Umarex Complete with a K NCR. It's a nitrogen PCP um, powered by a 36 PSI nitrogen cartridge that. Um, has a lot, a lot of pros to it, including not being temperature sensitive. There's just a lot going on for this, this whole thing. I'm excited about it. But anyways, I'm back at 50 yards. I did some testing at 25. Previously, before the iguana hunt, I took a bunch of JSB pellets out um, and tested them. It did not care for the lighter ones. And I also heard from JB from Umarex that it likes heavier pellets. So in my previous pellet testing to this video, I just tested the heavier pellets. I have the JSB 18-1-3s, and that was kind of funny, huh? And then I have the JTS Dead Centers. These are also 18.1, and then I have the AEAs. These ones are a little heavier at 25.3 grains. So these were the favorite at 25 yards, which it was kind of hard to tell. I tested seven, di seven different pellets, and 
all but two did pretty well, but these are the top three. So I'm gonna test them at 50 yards and see how we do. Okay. And five. Eh, not terrible, but not great either. So we'll go ahead and see how the JTS dead centers do. I will shoot the bottom left. And of course, why is it? The last two, they just decide they don't want to hang out with the group. All right, so that, those were actually really good. Um, very pleased with the results on those. Now let's check out the AEAs. A um, little heavier pellet, we'll see where they hit. I'm actually going to um, aim bring my aim point up so we can get on paper and know <laughs> where this is shooting. I should have thought about that about two shots ago, right? Let me um, load some more pellets in here. All right, five shots. I'm bringing the aim point up one mil dot. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. That was an accident. Let's not double cock it. Mm. One more. Oh, why? Again. Again. The last two just going crazy. All right, so some of you might think that I am playing favorites because I really like JSBs. I like other pellets too, but since JSB was the first um, ones that I shot, and it's a brand new cartridge of nitrogen. I have a thing where I know that some guns, maybe the first few shots, aren't the best shots. So I'm going to consider that and I'm gonna give JSB another chance. So we're gonna shoot, oh, I've already got four in here. I'm gonna shoot another group at the top right and see how it does. I'm not playing favorites, I'm just being fair. You guys know how air guns are sometimes. Oh, looks like a pretty near bullseye. Mm. Oh. Oh. And I'm so glad I did give them another chance. Aren't you guys? You guys are right there with me. I know it. I know it. When I shot the first group, that's exactly what you were thinking. Angie, it's not gonna be the best because you need to shoot like five or seven shots before you start grouping. And absolutely, there you go. If you guys have to, if you guys are doing pellet testing, maybe your first group doesn't turn out very great, very good, don't blame the pellet. Blame the gun and the shooter. It's my fault too. And give them another chance. <laughs> All right, so those are the 50 yard results and <laughs> they're pretty good. Yeah, this is definitely a 50 yard gun at least, at least. Maybe in the near future, I'll get to take it back further and we'll test it some more, but at least a 50 yard gun. So next up is offhand. And I already know, I already know how this does offhand because we just got back from an iguana hunt and this was the star of the show. Um, and most of our shots were offhand because we do have, we did have um, bog tripods and shooting sticks but sometimes there's just not time for all that. So we did take quite a few offhand shots and made some beautiful, beautiful headshots with this. So that's enough talk, guys. Let's get on to offhanding. Offhanding. Handing off. Shooting the gun offhand. Offhand shots. Yeah, whatever. All right, here we go.
Uh oh. My target's not standing up too good. Oh, this was, I forgot that this was not sighted in, so I need to see where I'm shooting at 25. Duh. right above his ear. Got him. Now that one's broken. That's not swinging because I shot, I accidentally shot the top bar with the 50 cal hammer. So <laughs> I did some damage to it so it doesn't swing like it should, which does not show the power that this is actually putting out. So please forgive me, but we're just going to talk about accuracy right now. All right, see if I can hit that tiny one. Nice. Nice. Oh, missed that one. Oh, I missed that one. There we go. That's about the size of the target we had on an iguana, the kill shot. So definitely a great offhander, the Umarex Complete. Now let's get down to business. So some of you might say, sub $300 gun, uh, trigger can't be that, that great on it, really. It's probably got a really crappy trigger. Um, I beg to differ. I love the trigger. It's actually less than a pound and single stage, no surprise at all. Nothing that will throw your shot off absolutely assists in making the perfect shot. So the first test I got 12.7 ounces and the second test I got 10.4 ounces, less than a pound trigger. Absolutely lovely. Good job. All right, so is this guy backyard friendly? I think so. Of course, guys, it depends on where your backyard is located and how good your neighbor's hearing is. <laughs> So the first dB meter reading I got on this was 96.8. This is at the muzzle, at the muzzle, and 95.4. Now, I brought it back to the back of the table to get a perspective from the shooter. What is the shooter going to hear? Is it going to be quieter, louder? Well, I got 96.1 and 96.6. So pretty near the same. A little quieter from the shooter's perspective, but not much. Now, what about full to empty? From full to with a brand new Nitro Air cartridge, the very first shot, I got 775 feet per second. The second shot, I got 804. So the first shot was kind of like settling in. Okay, I'm ready. Um, then halfway through, halfway through at 34, shot 34, I got 807 feet per second. So we're really um, pretty near between 804 and I think the highest might have been 816. So, and then shot 64, which is, I mean 68, which is not at all where I would say you're not getting full power shots. I just shot it until the accuracy started dropping. So at shot 68, I was getting 684 feet per second. But, but, get this, it really, Umarex says that you get 40 to 45 full power consistent shots out of this. It is regulated. So each, each shot is getting pushed down range by 1800 PSI. So that's every shot, unless you're the very first shot maybe, or <laughs> the last, I'd say about 10 shots that I took here. Um, it really did not start dropping significantly until about shot 56, 57. 56 I got. 804 feet per second, 26.1 foot pounds of energy, which is not far off. The highest FPE I got was 26.8. It looks like, oh, nope, 26.9. So it really didn't start dropping significantly, significantly until shot 56. So really, if you're taking this out as a hunter, you're going to get pretty consistent shots. You're going to get more than 40 to 45 shots that you could actually use with this one. It started dropping at about 56. And other than that, shot placement and energy was pretty much the same. So kudos, that's pretty awesome. 
As far as shot strings, the average I got with the JSB 1813's five shot group was 812 feet per second and 26.7 foot pounds of energy. So about 26 foot pounds of energy and 812 feet per second, per second for an average. It's pretty good, hunt worthy. I know this, I've already taken it out there. We've done some hunting with it. It was absolutely excellent, excellent day. So that's it as far as velocity and foot pounds of energy, absolutely sufficient. All right guys, so this is gonna be the wrap up um, of what I think of the Umarex Complete NCR nitrogen powered PCP. It's available in 22 and 177. I've only shot the 22 and frankly guys, I know there's a lot of you out there that don't see the point of it. I love this thing, I absolutely love it. Um, I first shot it at 25 yards, did some pellet testing. I stuck with the heavier ammo because one, that's what JSB from Umarex suggested. Two, I did test a whole bunch of JSB pellets before I went to Florida for my iguana hunt. It did not like the lighter ones, not even the Hades. So we're gonna stick with heavier ones. And out of the heavier pellets, I shot seven of them. There were only two that it said, uh-uh, I don't like you. But these are the top three. I've got the AEA, these ones are 25.3 grains, and then JTS 18.1s, JSB 18.1s. Absolutely loved them at 25 yards. It was one hole. All of them were one, well the AEA I think might have been a little bit more than one hole, but the JTS and JSB were one hole shots, um, five shot, one hole group. So absolutely beautiful at 25 yards. So guys, after I shoot it at 25 yards and find the favorite pellets, what do I do? Bring it back to 50, of course. We wanna see if this guy's a 50 yard gun. So taking some shot at 50 yards, I started out with the JSBs and they gave them a second chance and the top 50 yard pellets are gonna be the JSB 1813s and the JTS dead centers. Those two did absolutely beautiful. The AEAs kind of shot like a caterpillar straight up and down line. Had three in pretty much the same hole and then two wonky ones. So not to be counted out, but not as good as the JTS and the JSBs. So all in all guys, um, with the 50 yard accuracy, absolutely a 50 yard gun, lightweight, definitely an offhander, sweet, sweet trigger, backyard friendly, um, easy to fill. Like a lot of people will say, what's the point of this? Because um, you're gonna have to pay, a certain, I think these cartridges are like 22 or 24 bucks for two. That's 11 to $12 per cartridge. You're gonna get 45 to 50 shots. 40 to 45 is what Umarek claims. I got 56. 56 consistent, beautiful, high-powered shots um, out of one cartridge. And I mean, let me ask you a question. There's a lot of people in this country and other countries that rent homes because they don't have 20 grand to put down on a home. So maybe a lot of people don't have $1,300, $600, whatever it is to buy a compressor, or $500 to buy a tank, $300 to buy a tank. $11 sounds like a pretty good deal at this point. So it's definitely a good thing to be able to offer consumers to dip their toes in the PCP world without a big expense. So I think it's great. Plus I get a lot of people that are like, all right, I've got these pests in the backyard. I don't shoot very often, so I'm not really willing to go out and spend all this money on an air gun and PC and a compressor and all of that just to take care of a few pests occasionally. And brake barrels, well, frankly, they can be hold sensitive, so a lot of people will buy a brake barrel. They don't know it's hold sensitive. It's not accurate enough for them. They don't like them. PCPs are a heck of a lot easier to be on spot every time. So the ability to have something like this sitting by your door not concerned about what temperature it is outside if it's gonna operate properly like CO2. Not concerned about, oh, I only shot two squirrels that were gonna get in my house and chew the wires up in the walls. I only shot two, now I need to degas the gun and get it ready for another cartridge next time I shoot. No, you can leave the nitrogen cylinders in there indefinitely. So, I mean, how many good points do I need to bring up about this Umarex Complete? It's a great idea. One thing about Umarex that I will say, I know I'm doing a lot of talking right now, but I've got a lot to say about this guy. So <laughs> one thing I will say about Umarex is they pretty much have something for every niche, every air gunner alive. They've got something for them. They've got replicas, they've got BB guns, pellet guns, CO2 pellet, CO2 BB. They've got big bore, small bore, brake barrels. They've got pretty much everything. And now, now, 
they have something. They have a PCP option without the extra expense available for those who it would benefit. No, it's not going to benefit somebody that already has a compressor, already has a tank. It's not going to benefit you. Why would you go buy this when you already have the things that you need to fill up any other PCPs? But another, unless, unless, here's a good point too, unless. So we went through um, Florida with Iguana Lifestyles on an iguana hunt. This was the star of the show. I mean, apps, this and the origin, Umarex origin, they were both the star of the show. I mean, we did not have to worry about, as long as I had my handy dandy Allen wrench, because I did leave that the first time, as long as I have my handy dandy Allen wrench, Allen wrench, not ranch, and extra nitrogen tanks, which those fit perfectly in my yoga pant pockets. Um, as long as I have those, I don't have to go back to the truck for air. I don't have to pull a wagon or, or drive a buggy so it can carry my compressor or my tank. All I needed was one of these and an Allen wrench. So uh, if you're doing stuff like that, perfect. This is absolutely perfect. Guys, I don't know what else I can say about this air rifle. I think it's cutting edge. I think it's actually entering into a whole nother level with air guns. I am hoping to see some CO2 replaced with nitrogen. That would be awesome. But that's going to be it for today. This is the Umarex Complete NCR. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Umarex. Y'all don't just have a good day. Have an awesome one. See ya. Now take your 3600 PSI, 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 PSI. <laughs> it grabs the tank. It, it... <laughs>